It sounded too like music was a really important companion to you in the good times and in the bad. Oh, but you had a yeah. terrible accident. All right, my love. I wondered if we could start at the beginning with your musical childhood. Should I play this while you're... <laughs> yes! It's too stark. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just had that on loop in the background. That's so great. Because <laughs> you were singer, mm -hmm. piano player, mm -hmm. and Winnipeg has this amazing classical music scene, and mm -hmm. it sounds like my mom was mm -hmm. a music professor mm -hmm. at the University of Manitoba, okay. and the highlight of my year was getting to play with the orchestra mm -hmm. at the um, Centennial Concert mm -hmm. Hall, mm -hmm. where you got to like walk on the red carpet and then play with a sound mm -hmm. is so beautiful and rich. Wow. It sounds like music was absolutely your childhood, too. When I think of my childhood, it's it leans mostly soundtrack. Yeah. So the soundtrack of my life is actually more like the soundtrack was my life. Yeah. So when I was a very little, little person, it started um, with, I think, my grandparents. So um, my on my dad's side, uh, the Ukrainian, very, very Ukrainian side, he grew up in Lockport, Manitoba, which was um, a tiny little spot on off the freeway, off the highway. Yeah. Um, north of Winnipeg and there's a farmhouse there that are, is still in the family yeah. and it, it was tiny and there was a piano just like this in fact I got this piano because I needed to get one just like the one at my oh. my family's farmhouse Gorgeous. and so on Sundays um, we would try to fit in as much music as possible before the Disney movie at 6 p.m. do you remember when that would start and the, the fireworks <laughs> at the beginning of the, yeah. yes so I was always kind of the last one at the piano sweet and there's always just hymns um, the the sheet music for hymns yeah. on the piano and and my dad had 12 brothers and sisters so between aunts and cousins there'd be a lot of people around I love it um, and that was that was that I was very very little but I was even littler when I was with my my grandparents on my mom's side my very first memory of my life is mm -hmm me sitting on my grandpa's knee while he played the fiddle and my grandmother was across from him, from him about just just like us now mm. and she was playing the mouth harp harmonica yes um <laughs> in front of the refrigerator and and you know they're jamming and i'm just bouncing on on my my grandpa's knee and he's playing the fiddle and they played beautifully together so mm. i i actually find it bizarre uncanny and like cliche almost that at this point in my life, I am now a duo with my husband because it was literally the yeah. very first memory of my life. Mm. And so in, in my schema of life, you play music and you marry your musical partner <laughs> and you live out a musical life together. I mean, that That's was, beautiful. you know, and then from there, I think it was just, you know, my parents could see that I, I did definitely have like an unnervingly, like, like a kind of um, mm -hmm. like a level yeah. of musicality to me. Like by the, if we, if we went to the movies, when we came home, you know, everybody would go to their respective places. I would go to the piano and oh. play the score. Oh my gosh. That's what, you know, as so a child. you're like emotionally thinking through the story, through I, the music again. I mean, yeah, I just, I just felt like you had to, everything, everything was expressed through that lens yeah. and so I, I i just was and i had cr a crazy ear uh -huh. and so i guess i was about um i mean there's you know the pictures of me are i'm very very little and i'm at the piano and then i guess at some point my mom said why don't you sing while you play and because uh, i was singing separate and then so i started to accompany myself by the time i was five or six and so i was you know then put into the conservatory of music because they could see that you know that there was something going on, and so um, the and Conservatory was, of Music is yeah. incredible. Yeah, the program is amazing, and I'm yeah. one of the one of the people who who is very you know lucky to have have been able to go through it. Yeah, and so I, I ended up at the U of M by the end of my little life oh, the there. The University of yeah, Manitoba, yeah, in the gifted youth program. Amazing with, with Andrea Labelle, and she was my vocal trainer, and then. Um, and then I kind of just, because I was listening to so much music, whether it was, you know, um, 
gospel or, you know, Elvis or, you know, my brothers playing their evil music, the Judas Priest and the Led Zeppelin, like whatever it was, <laughs> you know, I was so influenced by all of it. And then yeah. at some point I was, I started to really write my own music. And yeah. so those, th those sort of forces were, were kind of working together and then eventually yeah. it, it turned into yeah. um, me just writing my own music. It sounded too like music was a really important companion to you in the good times and in the bad. Oh, but you had a yeah. terrible accident? Is oh, I right? did. Yeah, I mean, I would say long before that, music yeah. was what I leaned on. But I did have an accident when I was 19. Yeah. And that was a, just overall a terrible time in my life. And I think that's a, <clears throat> a great time to just completely fall, like have the wheels completely come off mm. and, and start your life. And so, yeah. My wheels literally came off yeah. in, in Italy. I, I wasn't in an accident. What happened? I was hit by a motorcycle that. while I was on a moped. He had just gotten a ticket for having his lamp off. Oh my gosh! Um, by a cop on foot, and the cop said, "You know, you've got to you've got to um, take your bike um, home. On you have to you know walk your bike home." And he said, "No way!" And he grabbed the ticket from the cop on foot and he peeled away and hit me. Oh. And because he, he said to him, "You're never you know you're gonna hit you're gonna hit someone. Nobody can see you." Yeah. And that's what happened. So oh. he wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I spent a lot of time in the hospital there, and um, oh. and had my little tenure with with um, with with morphine. It was great. Yes, <laughs> yes. the <laughs> endless itch of the gift of morphine that goes on and on. Why is yeah. that? Anyway, so yeah, and I think you know, even in the hospital when I was in, when I could not move, I would sing to oh. the nurses. And they they loved it, and I knew that that I knew Wait, that. So there's these Italian nurses, oh, and you're yeah. this is all in English. I love that. Mm -hmm. I was singing them like the world renowned. Like I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it was super cute. And um, I like how you went big. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You went Whitney yeah, Houston. Yeah. Go big or go home. Yeah, I was there a month, and had great um, great doctors and nurses. Yeah. Was that when you began, like, really writing your own music, or was that after? I had I was already writing my own music. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a little girl, and um, I was on the school bus with my girlfriends, and I would write a song about like the homeless and indigenous on the way into school. My school was downtown, yeah. And and the kids all sang the songs that I would write on the bus. Stop. And my I'm still friends with all of those girls, and they we still talk about it. They remember the songs. It's incredible. So I was little when I was yeah. writing songs. Um, but I think that when I had my accident right after that, that was when I became, you know, very serious about it. Yeah. And that I was going to make, you know, in my mind, like I was going to make my, my, my demos. I was going to make an album. Like I was going to, yeah. you know, be an artist, you know, yes. for real as my life. Your first album, Under These Rocks and Stones, is... It, it was not <laughs> to me baby kate not just an album it was like a full wide range of acceptable human emotion ah. for the canadian girl mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of a sudden because it had these open-hearted mm -hmm. joyful songs mm -hmm. or bittersweet songs or angry songs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. i thought um like very transformative at least for my emotional range i wonder if there's a song from that album that is still particularly meaningful to you now mm. as you look back? Definitely Surrounded because it was the song, uh -huh. you know, of my life. Like, I wrote Surrounded, but then Surrounded wrote my life. Surrounded is the song that I sent to a record label. Yeah. Within halfway through a listen, the record company called. Wow. They said, you know, we would like to come like tomorrow to Winnipeg. Oh my God! Will you pick us up? Do you have somewhere that you can, you know, play your songs for us? We'd like to meet you. Oh We'd gosh. also like to bring the publishing arm of Sony with us. <laughs> so by the next day, essentially, oh I had you know essentially like a, a lifelong life. oh my gosh publishing deal and a record deal. Yeah. And um, and within you know that was February, and by June I was recording my album at all the sta top staple studios in Los Angeles that I still, Whoa. you know, that are still 
alive and well, like the Conways and the A&Ms and Ocean Ways. And, yeah. you know, in September when the single came out, um, I was traveling, you know, around the world, going to all of the Sony offices and starting to, um, you know, work with their teams and, and create um, a base in many countries. So Whoa. I was you know, a 21 year old girl when I got signed, I was a 22 year old girl when, when it came out. So it was, it was rather of a whirlwind. Um, it was wild, wow. you know, you describe, um, the soulmate feeling of wanting to sort of meet and marry your musical other half yeah. and like for all Canadians everywhere, the idea that the two, <laughs> I'm just using puppet hands right now with like the two most spectacularly wonderful and beautiful people would then meet each other. Uh, It's like just watching your favorite bands get married when you know that you know that they're separate. And I I truly like no lead singers like in my head. I I had it would be like a bad mustache or, you know, no. And yet. And there, he was. there he was. I imagine yeah. that a lot of the early years <laughs> is all of the thrill of like, I want so much to be known, and yet I would really prefer if you know all the wonderful parts in particular. Mm. May I list them now? I I wonder that you have such like a heart forward way of getting to know people. Like uh-huh. you're obviously very good at intimacy, mm. and mm-hmm. I wonder what the first mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm that he knew about you that you kind of like wish that he didn't you're like well here i am and wow that's a great i mean we should bring him in here (laughs) um wow that's a yeah wow well i was in a very abusive relationship (sighs) when i got in my accident and i i think it's almost like i am so heart forward and i am so transparent that I almost needed to just, like, until I could say to myself, you know, okay, he knows everything, right? I really needed that. And, and it is, it's, it is a private, private pain, the level of abuse. And it's not just, it's not just the abuse of the person. It was the self-destructiveness that I was in at the time, right? And so, um, it wasn't pretty, um, and I, I did... I did feel that I needed to to let him know what that had looked like. Yeah. For a bunch of reasons. Yeah. At, you know. And yet even though I needed him to know, okay, first of all, he is so amazing with people. Rain Rain is like he is neutral borderline aloof, but the thing that I love about him is that despite that slightly like mysterious thing about him, I'm always amazed at how great he is with people and news. Huh. Nothing shocks him. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's very hard to get any kind of a rise out of him. Yeah. He is like a rock. Mm. He really, really is. And so I can remember that I was like shaking. I remember where I was sitting in my car, in my car rental in Toronto, mm. um, outside of actually the Sony building when I needed to tell him before I could go inside the building and have a day as this like 22 year old girl, I needed to tell him the things that I I had sort of, I felt I was hiding. I mean, we'd only met, (laughs) we'd only just met, but but I I remember when I told him, he didn't, it didn't affect him that much. Like he already loved me, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can also remember the very first time that I was back home in Winnipeg and I told him that I loved him unconditionally. And I remembered that I felt that way mm. and the way he received that, like he was more, he got, that, that seemed to affect him a lot more, I can remember, mm. than me telling him something that I felt yeah. really ashamed of, you know. And so he's just, you know, he always talks about like being the bigger person, but he like actually is the bigger person. Like mm. I have seen him be a big person yeah. Um and when I, I I could not have been a, that big of a person, like he's a he's an absolutely um, yeah smart soul, yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. I just your description it makes me think of that song you wrote the like let me tell you who you really are mm. like mm, you're just, my comfort 
you're not a superstar. Well, can I tell you what that's actually about? Yeah, okay. tell me. So in my family dynamic, we have, you know, major challenges with, with mental wellness in, in one of my, you know, family members. And at one, this one day, I was in Vancouver in a really big show with like Sarah McLaughlin and I think Rain's band was on, like all these people we were piling into an arena to do a huge, actually I think a big cancer benefit. Wow. And um, my, my uh, family member went missing in an episode, you know, and it was wow. really, and, and, and at that point in my life, it was still the driving force of my life was my, my, my family member's health. And I was so upset and I'd gone over to, I think, my manager at the time, his house, and there was a guitar, and I picked up the guitar, and I literally wrote the song in two minutes, mm. sitting there thinking about like the, this, this family member's whereabouts. And so what I'm actually saying is mm. um, it's the reverse of conversation. So in my mind, it's the person saying to me, let me tell you, Chantel, who you really are to me. I You're see. my comfort. You're not a superstar. You know, um, and and I think what do I say? Like, you know, in my comfort, you're not a superstar, and I can make you to, and I can bring you back down to the ground, yeah, and show you everything, and show you everything you dream about. Yeah, like it's about yes, and, it leads and up give to that you note. everything you dream about. So it's yeah. it's basically me. You know, I think. You know, people will say, like, what, how do you remain grounded? Uh -huh. You know, and I think that when you come from such tethering, you know, in your family's health and wellness, mm -hmm. it's very hard to shed that, mm -hmm. you know. And so that's very much what, what that song is, 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 is me, uh, like, pre like, reflecting back to myself what, what I mean to my family. Oh, that's you know, beautiful. that I'm really just yeah. a family member yeah. more than... Any of these other things that are, you know, yeah. circling. Yes. Yeah. You've been really uh, passionate and honest about the cost of what happens when, in a family, someone is struggling with mental health, right. and they can't, they cannot get that diagnosis, the care, the right. access, the average diagnosis, thirty years. And I just, I get it. You know, I, I, I had a doctor tell me, you know, a decade ago. Just stop. There's nothing to be done. You know, just stop. And I, I, don't, I don't know that that's the right mm -hmm. come at either. Mm -hmm. I do know this. Um, I do know that I, one thing I can see in my friends who don't have kids and my friends who do have kids is that we all can only be so much mm -hmm. to so many people, right? Yeah. And at some point, um, it becomes you know, too hard on you, you know, body, mind, spirit to be omnipresent, Yeah. you know, and I, I had a moment when I did, I did for my own health, Yeah. I, I did have to decide. I am first and foremost a mother to these children. Because the amount of vigilance and caregiving it about was, other people in your yeah, family Yeah, like I, I just, I just, I think, you know, you, you, at some point, whether it's a marriage or anything else, any relationship, like if, if someone is not on board to mm -hmm. help like pull their own weight and be accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I tell my kids all the time when, you know, complaints are made about a style, uh, something that happened as a child, it's my fault, my husband's fault, whatever it is, like that, that might be so. Mm -hmm. And I am sorry. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Now you are in your life and you are accountable. Mm -hmm. I cannot fix that for you like you're gonna need mm -hmm. to go and seek what you need in order to heal that trauma because it is yours completely mm -hmm. yours I may have been mm -hmm. a part of it no one wakes up in this house for example to be you know abusive or seek and destroy that is not a thing everybody did their best um, but I do think that someone has to be accountable uh, for their own, you know, pain, suffering, and, and, and you know, mm -hmm. that work, it's required of us, right? And so I think whether it was conscious or maybe still a bit unconscious at the time, I think I put my own body first, yeah. how my own health first, because these little people, 
they needed me. Yeah. I, I still don't think I still don't think they got the best of me mm -hmm. because of what that that grievance has had been in my life. Um, I'm much better now than I was with regard to that letting go. Mm -hmm. um, but I've, I've had to do it. I yeah. have had to do it. And I, I think a lot of people get to that point. And I don't think a lot of people talk about it. But they have to come at family, extended family, um, yeah. on their own terms. And they have to do it in a way that, okay, like this isn't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it's something that I need to do because there's just not enough of me to go around. Yes. Have you had stretches of depression? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like tar pit type and just, I have a lot of depression in my family and, and we think of it like seasons sometimes and other times. I, I know that what I grew up around, yeah. I don't have. Yeah. And I, I am somebody that like, I always say the first 10 minutes of my day are really, really hard. They're getting yeah. easier. Yeah. But those are hard. And then after that, I'm in. And yeah, I think, I think probably. You have to like gear up for I it. I got to gear up. I, I, I often start yeah. the day. I'm like, can't do it. Won't do it. Yeah. Won't happen. And then I sort of yes. in this, you know, stupor go into my, my closet put put the gear on yeah the you know okay got got a knee brace on got sneakers on yeah. all the things that mean i'm moving forward yeah and and then with that sort of wardrobe that costume yeah, I see. you put on I your do. armor for the day i do and yeah. it works for me my my dad's um has struggled with depression most of his life and i can tell when he wakes up because it is the cutest saddest thing i ever hear oh, man. it's so adorable but i know that he opens his eyes in a dark room and then I hear him sing a little song to himself. Okay. And I love it. That's because great. Because it goes, go, Jerry, go, Jerry, yeah. go, Jerry, go. Yeah. And like he is yeah. launching himself yeah. into his day. That's it. And I love the like, mm -hmm. to when, I hear, when I hear it, I think like courage. I'm hearing courage. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. I think people are complex, you know, and, and so... Yeah. There's your chemistry, there's the things that you you have experienced, your your traumas as, as a child and what you're up against yeah. in your day, right? And then there's um and then there's just a straight up like I imagine it like a weed pushing through concrete. You just you can't fight it. It is pushing through. Yes. No matter what you do to that weed, it is pushing through. I feel like I am like that. Like I am a very upbeat person yeah. um, and I'm, no matter what, I just end up funny and fun and bright and light and I have a sense of humor. Um, I thrive on people's yeah. joy. Um, I thrive on learning and on nature and I have so, so much stuff in my arsenal yeah. that, you know, I can't go down. Yes, you know, I hear you. but but is yeah. there something in my soup? Yeah, you know that is um, terrifying. Sure. Yeah, there is. It's sure. There's a there's a dark tornado in there somewhere. Um, <laughs> but sometimes it just stirs the pot, and that's <laughs> <laughs> totally it helps a little. You know exactly. Yeah. So, but I think that I think that if you listen to my music, for example that's all in there yeah it's it's there yeah um the totally. light the the um the pollyanna meets you know dark night of the soul sometimes destructor <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah for sure i totally it's hear it kind of all in there yes and i and i think you know that's kind of um being a woman uh -huh. in in a way is i mean it's <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah i remember when i had my first baby and uh, I can remember I went to the toilet in the night and I just never felt worse in my life, yes. you know, after birth. And I remember I was sitting there and I think I said the words out loud. Melody tells you. Oh, honey. Why, why does nobody tell oh, you? Honey. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Right? Nobody tells you. Nobody tells no, you. No, they don't. Mm -mm. And, and so we go through, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, yeah. 
and uh, just like pain everywhere and just like and no sleep ever again and this like this little stranger that I thought I was gonna like and is now like a terrorist yes. you know forever yeah. in my house so I think we are all you know like depression is warranted yes anyway like you know I, when I hear people saying postpartum sometimes I'm like yeah you had a baby <laughs> like, like, what are you talking about you drove a truck through your body yeah um, and and your life is ruined yes as you knew it yeah or you have a new life yeah you know yeah and it's and you have no idea what that looks like yeah one of the things you are very uh, honest about is that love in marriage is a choice yeah. and it's really hard yes and I don't <laughs> why is that so refreshing Let me get my ah! <laughs> it's Sunday and I drink early in the day on Sundays <laughs> Why do you think people are so, I mean, you had this documentary, you and Rain did this <laughs> wonderful documentary, which I watched uh, with so much interest and um, like, uh -huh. I thought I was going to have, I thought compassion was going to like fall out of my eyeballs because wow. it was, uh, you're going, you know, it's dead of winter. You're going to this. Yeah, that was a mistake. Remote. Yeah. Mm -hmm fishing village uh -huh. yeah to island in france yeah to create music together to get away yes from the terrorists <laughs> you have us you have two very different kind of like emotional patterns mm. that you're bringing together right. and then you're going to mm -hmm. co-create right. something yeah and then for the next two hours i watch two people who love each other very much mm -hmm. be honest about how about like the the struggle yeah. like the grinding the gears mm -hmm. of that like a rubik's cube that cube and it's like Yes. But the Rubik's Cube, it would, if, if I just couldn't find all green or all yellow, that'd be great. This was just like, yes. we couldn't even move the freaking, like, the yes. cubes. <laughs> like, you know, it was, I found it very honest and very refreshing to see people be that honest. Well, what I'm always fascinated by, and, and, and I guess I could use celebrity couples as, um, as sort of the, the example, but I'm seeing it now as a, as a you know, 50 year old woman i'm seeing it in people just people yeah there's this um we're together we're together we're on the red carpet everything's great haven't heard from them for a while we would like to announce <laughs> that we love our children and we very much love and respect each other and we plan to continue on as a family that we are not together anymore please give us our privacy while we yes. Ja, ja, ja. And so the announcement's yes. made, yes. And, 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 and like for me, I'm like, damn, I'd sure like to see the thing between the last red carpet and, yeah. and the, you know. Absolutely. And, and the announcement. And the very smoothed over announcement. Yeah. And, and I think as I get older, what's amazing to me is, you know, I, I hear people saying like um, that, you know, there's ageism and, and you know, oh, it's old and there's nothing left. And like, to me, there is just like a treasure trove of truth that has not been yeah. even, like, to me, it's like gold rush. Yeah. There's so much about the human condition and these constructs we live in that we have not yeah. began to share. And yeah. how many years into marriage are you, like decades 27 later? 27 years yeah. together, yeah. 20, about to be 24. And you're married. like, we're just getting started. We're yeah, like, I mean, I don't know if I don't know if he and I are, maybe we are. I mean, I always think that every single day you're a new iteration of, of yourself. Yeah. And, and you're, you know, you are, um, there's new opportunities for, for growth every single day. And failing and falling and getting back up and yeah. you know your conflicts are your strengths and I think in terms of of he, he and I like I think about the history together as as becoming more and more precious mm -hmm. and almost like it almost like incentivizes me even more to really sort out what's the best way forward for us mm -hmm. because if we can you know um, protect this thing we have it is unbelievable but you know the yeah the 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 movie we made is a moment yeah it's a moment in a marriage it's not every day no and it's not every year it's but it's that moment yeah and it that was a really hard moment 
And I think in marriage, if you're in it, you know, for the long game, there are really, really frigging hard times. Yeah. And, you know, where you, you're like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Yeah. This is so hard. This shouldn't be this hard. Oh my gosh. And, and all of the, um, you know, the responses were just incredible. Uh, most of them went something like this. Thank you for validating yeah. the, the pressure of marriage, the truth of marriage, the, the hard times. Thank you. Some people, still to this day, I'll get something that says, well, if it's that hard, then you should not be married. You know, or leave that asshole, or she's too needy. Uh-huh. You're not a match. I used to be a fan. Clearly, you're this weak, abused woman who can't stand up for herself. You know, or or Rain. She's like I read some of Rain's, and it'll uh-huh. be like, dude, you need to put your woman in her place. She's emasculating you. You know, uh-huh. everyone sees that film yes. through their yes. filter, through yeah. their lens. Yeah. And that is very powerful yeah. to me. Yeah. Because it's it's a moment for them yes. to, to get this opportunity to actually internalize what they think of the concept of marriage, never mind their own marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, we need more conversations. I agree. Um, surrounding the struggle of marriage. I love the way you love each other. Mm. And I just wondered if there was what song that you've written lately that feels like it most encapsulates the stage that you guys are in. That's so funny. We've been writing a song. Are you really? Wow. Yeah, it's called All For You. And it's so funny. The the lyric that just came out of me, like he was writing this sort of verse part to it. And um, I was coming in with a chorus part and the words just just came out i i do it all for you i do it all for you i do it all for you Mm. and and i think at some point you know for good or for bad like you're making that choice right like i'm i'm doing this we're doing it for each other everything yeah everything we do is really for each other and so um the fact that that just kind of popped out in a song is it's it's quite it's it's really exceptional to me because um, if you told me we were going to write a song like that ten years ago, I, I was at no, yeah, you know because that sounds cheesy or something. But um, that's that's the truth. That's where we are now. Oh, that's yeah. so gorgeous. Lovey, thank you for doing this with me. You are like the most delightfully. I mean, this is the great compliment entirely transparent like i think one of the great things people can be ever and they rarely are is knowable and being able to know you is a joy so I thank you i think honesty you. is just where it's at honesty <laughs> is genius right it Isn't totally it? is i think it is i love it, I think it is. thank you hon well then i count you a genius